Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Go With Your Gut podcast. I am your host, Lauren Dreyer, and today we are talking about progress over perfection. I think it's a problem for a lot of people, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how it has affected me in my life and what I have uh, done to kind of shift that a little bit. First and foremost, I have never considered myself a perfectionist, ever. I have had a couple of things that kind of feel a little bit like perfectionism. Um, I used to stop in the middle of things a lot. And most of the time, I think it was because I didn't think I was good at it. Um, I would get overly frustrated if I wasn't good at it. And because of all those things, I just wouldn't want to do things because I didn't want to start something if I didn't already know how to do it, which doesn't really make much sense. I would also get super defensive because I didn't know how to do it right. And I knew it, but I didn't want somebody else to be able to teach me because it meant that I didn't know how to do it. Then something changed for me. I went through a lot of my childhood like that, and I didn't really understand how to work with it or I guess, overcome that, but I found something eventually that helped me be able to work past that. And it was because I found something that I wanted bad enough that I was willing to be bad at it so that I could get good at it because I wanted to be good at that thing bad enough. One thing I did was I started a blog. Now, it had been in my head for a long time that I wanted to start this blog. I had no idea how to start it. So naturally, I hopped online and did some research. I had no idea at first what I wanted to write about. I I had a a couple things that might have been good, but I thought, well, this is already saturated. I don't want to do that. Or this is what I should do, but I'm not really feeling that either. But that also requires making a website a lot of times. And I have zero zero experience for that. I've never built a website before in my life, nor do, nor is that really something that my brain does very well. I'm I'm not extremely technical minded. And so I thought, okay, if I'm going to build a website, I'm gonna have to it's going to be frustrating and I'm going to have to realize that it is going to be frustrating and I'm going to have to work through that. So I did the research, figured out where I wanted to go and I watched a lot of videos and I figured out how the heck to build a website. Very big learning curve. I got frustrated a lot of times, but I kept with it. And at first, it looked super rough because I don't know what I'm doing. Eventually, it started to look how I wanted it to look and something that I was proud of. I wrote a book and I've always had a hard time getting my thoughts organized and together. So that was a very interesting process. And again, I had never really written a book before. So what that all entailed, I had no idea, but I've, I wanted to do it so bad. And I wanted people to be able to have what I had in my head and be able to learn from it. So I said, okay, let's get this figured out and learn how to do it. So what did I start doing? I started to write. Anybody can start a word document or something and say chapter one and write what you want. I did start with an outline so it could be a little bit organized, but I had no idea how to write a book. Um, Starting a podcast. Now, that was kind of interesting because I kind of had to convince myself a little bit because I I thought, well, I know there's a lot of podcasts out there. I have no idea how to do this. And are people even going to listen to it? Are they going to watch it? I had no idea how to do it, but I decided it's something that I wanted to pursue eventually. So I did just that. 
same thing I'd always done. I did my research. I figured it out and I just started. I downloaded the app. I use Anchor. So I downloaded that and I played around with it. I had absolutely no idea how to do it, but it wasn't very hard to start. Then I had to figure out how to connect it so that my episodes can be on a lot of different platforms and I wouldn't have to go post it to each individual one. But I'd never done that before. I mean, absolutely, I can write down a bunch of things I want to say and talk about it, but I had never done anything like that before. <clears throat> so that was absolutely another learning curve. And some of it was very frustrating. And I was exhausted after some of it because I'm learning something new. But I did it. Or a business in general. I just kind of jumped headfirst and said, we're going to see how this goes. I've learned a lot. I'm still learning a lot. And there's a lot of times that I've had to pivot. I've had to put things on the back burner. I've had to do a lot of different shifting in some things. Yes, have not gone how I wanted. I feel like that's about rule number one of starting anything is it's probably not going to end up where you originally think it will. But all of these things with the progress over perfection, for me, that stemmed from fear. Uh, fear of failure, fear of being bad at something, and fear of the unknown. Because when you start something new, you have absolutely no idea how it's going to end up. You have no idea what is going to happen in the end. And for me, all of these things came down to one thing, and that is trust. And more specifically, trust in myself. See, trust in myself went very deep because a lot of times in my past, I did not trust myself to figure things out. I didn't trust myself with situations um, I would have to get everybody's opinion and I didn't want to make the decision. So learning how to trust myself and learning that no matter what happens, I will figure it out and learning to trust that, yes, whatever happens with a book, business, podcast, a website, I don't know what's going to happen with any of that. However, whatever does happen, I will figure it out when it happens. And the more that I have put myself out there and started the new thing and said, yeah, I'm probably going to be bad at this at first, but at least I'm starting it. At least I'm going for what I want to do. It was progress. By no means is it anywhere near perfect. And it never will be because, I mean, nobody's perfect. Nothing will ever be perfect. And I don't want to have to use the excuse of, I didn't start this because I was afraid that it wasn't going to be perfect and I did not trust myself to figure it out. For me, I figured out that life has a lot, a lot of moving parts. Now that looks differently for everyone. Everyone has their own set of moving parts, whether that be a uh, business, a job, family, uh, lots of friends, outside activities. Um, I mean, us as an individual, that is a huge part of all your moving pieces. Plus any of the extra hobbies we want to do, anything like that. We all have so much going on and it's hard for us. It's almost impossible for us to be perfect in any one of those aspects. And we get so hard on ourselves when all of them are not perfect. It's, I need to be perfect in my home life and work in whatever I want to do for myself. All of those things need to go perfect, your schedule. And it is, it's a known thing that life happens. So it's not ever going to be perfect. But as long as you can wrap your head around the idea that you're going to figure it out and if somebody wants to tell you 
that you shouldn't do it because you don't know exactly what they're doing. I would gently let that comment go and say, thanks, but I'm going to move forward with what I want to do. But the biggest thing, one of the biggest things I have learned is that you have to be willing to be bad at something because you're never going to be perfect. I've got a whole bunch of notes. I'm going to turn around so I can keep my train of thought. So a couple of questions you might ask, okay, well, how do I work on this? How do I help myself to focus on progress over perfection? Some of the things that I had to ask myself are one, how bad do I want this? Am I willing to be bad at something before I'm good at it? Am I willing to show myself? I don't even think that's a weakness. I think that's incredibly strong and brave for somebody to say, I'm, people are going to know that I'm not going to be bad at this and they can say whatever they want, but at least I tried. And yes, it is also going to require sacrifice because whenever you add something else on your place, it means you're probably sacrificing something else. But usually there's something that you're willing to sacrifice and you don't even have to do it forever. You just have to do it for a certain amount of time. And you can always say, you know, I thought it might be worth the sacrifice. It turns out it's not. But then you have to ask yourself that other question. Am I willing to be bad at it to get good? We go to school for a reason. We have practices for a reason. Practice makes perfect. Not going to make perfect, but it'll make pretty darn good. But are you willing to be bad at something in order to get good? Are you willing to make the mistakes so that you can learn and get good? Another thing that was big for me was what supports can I put in place when things get tough? We all live life. We all go through things. We all have life that happens, situations that happen, and things will get tough. There will be times when whatever it is, you want to quit when you're, when you think I don't have the time or I just don't like this anymore or for whatever reason, the people, people don't like it. People have told you that you're not good at it, or, you know, we can come up with a lot of different things, but what supports do I have when things get tough? What are you going to listen to when you don't have the motivation some night, or you've got a really busy day and this needs to happen. You need to get it done. Who can you call? What can you listen to? What tools can you have? If my mind is jumbled, I pull out my journal and I start writing what's in my head. And then all of a sudden it makes sense again. And I'm like, okay, I can get past this. This wasn't that big a deal. Or I honestly, I go talk to somebody about it and it ends up not being as big of a deal as I thought. Or as I talk about it, I say, oh, okay, that's what I needed to do. The next thing is obviously different for absolutely everyone, and that is, am I willing to learn and step out of my comfort zone? Because when you learn new things, it's always going to be a step, no matter how big it is, out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to go to a new class, be around new people. It's going to be out of your daily routine, probably. You're going to have to give up some daytime hours and nighttime hours, you're going to have to probably give up some sleep because everything shifts when you start something new and your time, it's got to, something's got to replace what you were doing. So are you willing to grow? Are you willing to learn a new thing? Are you willing to, I don't know, maybe learn that new language if you want to go abroad and you want to be able to communicate with locals? Um, are you willing to go back to school for something? Are you willing to give up that longer time span? Are you willing to give up some things 
because you're maybe you're going to pay for something, which means you can't pay for something else that you wanted to do. Are you willing to have step out of that comfort zone and give up those sacrifices? If there is something in your gut that you just want to do and it just won't go away, I would suggest figuring out some way that you could follow it. In my experience, I had I had that thing in my gut that says, this is what I want to do. And believe me, I have tried to push it away a lot of times because I said, I don't, I don't have the time for this. I, I don't know how to do this, or it's not moving as fast as I want. I have done all of those things. And every single time I do, it comes back and it says, no, keep on going, get your butt back up and keep moving forward. This is where you need to be. It's what you need to be doing. And there are people out there that need your help, that need need to hear what you're talking about. You need to, they need to know what you've gone through so that it can help them. And it just wouldn't go away. So I said, okay, I will, I'll keep on doing it. But it was in my gut and you know, whatever resistance I had, whether it was from an outside person or myself, which most of them have honestly been myself. I said, okay, I'm going to figure out how to do this. And I've asked and prayed for answers because that's the only way I've gotten them. Or I've also been open to something happening in a way that I wasn't expecting because most of the time that is on point. It does not happen the way that we think it's going to. Whether any of this is moving careers, whether it's moving companies, starting something new, learning a big new skill. Smaller ones don't happen quite as drastic, but learning a smaller one, Uh, going back to school or just starting something that you've always wanted to start. All of those things, you may be, you may be scared to start. So you may be thinking, how am I going to make this work? How am I going to do this? What, who can I pull in? What support systems can I have? And sometimes it's going to mean you get super, super organized in your schedule because you're going to have to tighten up your time and maybe look at where you waste the most time during the day and say, okay, I'm going to block out this time and I'm going to start this instead of sitting and doing something that is not really a good use of my time. So how can you make that happen for yourself? I started getting up super early and said, okay, these are the times that I'm going to spend getting myself better and doing what I want to do. Sometimes it's, it's different for everybody. Some people work weird scheduled. So it's during the day, maybe you're staying up later at night. Maybe you do what I do and you get up early and then you spend maybe a lunch break or something doing whatever you need to do, or maybe you, however you do that. But what do you need to do to go with your gut? Because if there is something in your gut that you're like, I want to do this, I want to take this next step. I want to go meet somebody. I want to go to a new country that I've never been before, but I'm super intimidated to do it. I'd have to learn a little bit of language. I'd have to make sure that all of my tours are set up, all that stuff. And it's just intimidating, but it's something that you want to do. Then figure out how to make it work. Because if it's anything like what I have felt, that thing in your gut will not go away until you take control of it and figure it out. It will keep coming back and taking up space where you could be doing other things. So progress over perfection. Make a little bit of progress every day. Start making a plan for yourself. Start changing those, start changing your habits during the day. Start changing 
the way you do things in your day, where you spend your time. Maybe, maybe somebody can help you out with kids, cleaning, something like that. Maybe you can figure out how to do some uh, pre-pep on food, or maybe you can just give up something that was not a great use of your time. But trusting yourself to figure it out, trusting yourself to go with your gut that you will figure it out. So as I always leave you, go with your gut and then keep going.